Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. All right, today I'm going to do a video for our YouTube channel, and it's going to be on uh, formations and snap counts. I had uh, one of our followers ask us with our tempo stuff how we use formations and, and how we build our snap counts into what we do. All right, so I'm going to do a video on form formations and snap counts today. Always remember to check out uh, some of our partners' dome hats, which is currently the, the Rydell hat that I'm wearing right now is a dome hat. Um, DC1, which is a, a company putting out a, that just launched a new app, app in 2019, uh, an in-game app that you can use, coordinators can use to track real-time game data. All right, GameStrat, which is a sideline replay system that we use. Max1, which is a strength training app that helps coaches kind of organize and, and uh, communicate with their players and, and keep their workouts all right, to where every player on the team knows what they're doing off of their phone. It's organized. You can communicate and message and it makes it a little bit more efficient, all right? And then just play uh, Sports Solutions, which is the playbook software that we use, and I know that they're launching a new, uh, a new playbook tool coming out soon, so check that out, all right? So for us, with our formations and our snap counts, the way we do it is, is our snap counts are built into our formation names. So when we give a regular formation or we get into a regular formation like this for us, I would call spread right near, all right? For me, I like to tell my running backs where to be. I like them. And when we're in two back, I like them to know where I want them all the time. We do have some stuff that is alignment assignment for the tailback, but most of the time when we're in two back sets, I am going to tell my running backs where I want them. So spread right near tells me that I want both backs near to the strength. All right, so they're both stacked near side to the strength. All right, spread right tells me that my Y and Z are going to the right, the X goes to the left. All right, we have a right guard, right tackle, left guard, left tackle, so they don't have to worry about up front. Uh, they don't have to worry about switching sides. Okay, so this would be spread right near. All right, any formation for us when we start in base, any formation for us that has a right or a left in it, we're going to snap the ball on one. All right, so our cadence is down, set, up. We're going to snap the ball on one if we are in a right or a left formation. So the kids know from day one when we teach them, if we say spread right, spread left, trips right, trips left, deuce right, deuce left, ace right, ace left. Brooklyn right, Brooklyn left, jumbo right, jumbo left, uh, you know, whatever, text right, text left. It doesn't matter what you tell them in the formation. If the formation has right or left, we are going to snap the ball on one, okay? When we build our tempo formations in, what we like to do is we like to set tempo formations and we like to give them a word, all right, that, that helps the kids, all right, kind of word associate that that means that formation and we never change that formation. Okay, so for instance, for us, all right, when we used to be a heavy quarterback run team, one of our standard tempo formations, all right, would be this two by two set, all right, and, and we have the tailback up as a sniffer, or we might replace the tailback with a sniffer or a, or a fullback body type, all right, but. We would get into, uh, into a formation like this, and it's built off our 2x2 two two stuff. Our 2x2, two two, generically, we can be even right, even left. Okay, so I can call even right or I can call even left. All right, but when I want to get into a tempo set, what I'll do with this set is I might call it Raider. All right, and I tell our kids that when we get into Raider, Raider is always even right with the sniffer on the strong side. Okay, so we start off in even right or even left, and, and we teach the formations, and we teach the receivers how to switch sides, and then we teach the tailback if he's going to be in alignment. If we're not in a pistol, he's an alignment assignment guy. Are we running zone right? Are we running zone left or outside zone right or outside zone left or quick game, which side do you need to be on? Okay, as soon as we go to Raider, we tell the tailback that you're going to be on the strong side, set as a sniffer, all right, in that formation, and that formation is never going to change. There is no Raider right, there is no Raider left. All right, Raider is that formation, okay? As soon as we eliminate the right or left, all right, we are going to snap the ball on first down. So as soon as we eliminate a right or a left, we are going to snap the ball on first down, okay? So now we've built into our kids, any formation with a right or a left is going to be snapped on one. Any formation that doesn't have a right or a left is going to be snapped on first down, okay? So... The other thing that, that, that we'll do, okay, is we will also freeze, okay, and we will also double freeze, 
All right, that's how we control snap counts. That's how we control the cadence. So the freeze for us would be a call or a signal coming in from the sideline. All right, double freeze is a call or a signal coming in from the sideline. All right, so now what we have built in is we have formations where we snap the ball on one, formations where we snap the ball on first sound, and then we have freeze and double freeze. So now we can change the snap count. Our kids know what the snap count is. We can slow the other teams down that think they know what the snap count is. All right, I'll have a lot of people that'll say, well, you know, we just did an all-star game and we installed the same thing in the all-star game. Local school's there. Everybody says, well, now they know what you're going to snap the ball on. Well, they have an idea what we might snap the ball on, but we still have freeze and double freeze and different mannerisms within our offense. Like any tempo offense, we have different mannerisms to where we can slow things down, play slower, play faster, play as fast as possible. All right, so when you're a tempo team, a couple things you got to keep in mind. Playing at one pace is not good. Whether that pace is as slow as possible or as fast as possible, neither one of those is a good thing. All right, when you're a tempo team, you want to be able to play at multiple paces and change it up for the defense. That is what makes it difficult on a defense. If you play at the fastest rate possible and snap the ball every six, eight seconds, whatever you want to call it, however you want to do it, eventually the defense figures out a way to communicate and whether it be formational blitzes, field blitzes, boundary blitzes, they figure out a way to communicate to keep up with that tempo. You have to be able to change that tempo. And if you want to be a good tempo team, good tempo teams play at multiple tempos. Tempos, excuse me. So what you got to be able to do is understand how to change your tempos, how to build those things in. So the reason we do this is it's very easy for our kids. So when every kid comes into our program, all right, we teach all of our kids how to play an offensive position and how to play a defensive position. So whether or not they start on that side of the ball, all right, is a different story, but they're all going to be taught an offensive position and a defensive position. So when they all come in, they all learn our snap count system, all right? So then, uh, you know, a unique way to practice this, and one of the things that we do, okay, is when you go to run, we'll set up after practice, and let's say we're going to run, all right, six half gasses. All right, so your half gasser is down to for 50 yards side to side, down to the other sideline and back, so it's 100 yards. All right, so let's say we're going to run six half gasses for time. We're doing it on offense, offensive cadence, okay? Everybody in, in, in our group, everybody on the team has been taught what those things mean. All right, so it doesn't even matter whether or not it's a formation. All right, it doesn't matter whether or not it, we've got the formation in. It's a fake formation. It doesn't matter to us, okay? If I say blue right, all right, that first gas that we run, that first group comes up, I say, hey, blue right, blue right. Doesn't even matter if it's a formation we run, all right? Every one of our kids had better know that we are going to snap the ball on one. So I'll get up there and I'll say, hey, first group up, O-line, D-line up. You got 18 seconds to run this half gasser. Blue right, blue right, down, set up. Anybody that goes on down when they're done with the gasser, they've got up downs. Anybody that doesn't go when I say hut when we're done with the gasser, they've got up downs, all right? The next group will come up, all right? Next group will come up, and I'll say, hey, we got uh, quarterbacks, running backs up. Quarterbacks, running backs up. Texas, Texas, okay? Even if that's not something in our formation group, even if it's not a tempo group, they know right away when I say quarterbacks, running backs up, here we go, Texas, Texas. There is no right or left. They know that that's going to be on first sound, all right? So I say quarterbacks, running backs up. Texas, Texas, down, okay? Anybody that doesn't go on first sound, they have to do up-downs afterwards, okay? Then I might take the next group up, all right? And, and I might say, hey, receivers, DBs up. Receivers and DBs are up. Hey, let's go gold left, all right? Let's go gold left, freeze. Gold left, freeze, gold left, freeze. Down set, hut. See if anybody moves. If anybody moves, they have up-downs after they do their half gas. Everybody should know that gold left freeze means we're not running a play. When I come back after that, all right, when I come back after that, they should know that gold left means we're going to snap the ball on one. So I'll say, hey, quarter, uh, receivers, DBs, you're up. Gold left freeze. Gold left freeze. Down set, huh? Nobody moves. All right, we're good to go. Then I come back and I say, hey, gold left, gold left, down. Say it, huh? They should all go on their half gasset. Okay, so now we have a way of building our formations in, building our snap counts in, changing our tempo, and then working those things when we're extra conditioning. Now, in our extra conditioning, we're teaching our kids how to listen and understand snap counts, formations, 
how to understand our system and, and, and learn what our system is. And then as you run, at the end of practice or whenever it is, as you start to run gassers, kids are tired. Make them think when they're tired, all right, and give them something extra to do if they can't accomplish the goal. Because if you jump off sides in the game, it costs the whole team five yards, right? So if you're going to go off sides, we're going to punish, all right? Sometimes we punish the whole group. Sometimes we punish individuals. just depends on what we're doing that day. Most of the time, we're going to start off punishing the group because when you go off sides on offense, they don't tell the receiver to back up five yards while the rest of the team stays up. The whole team goes back, so it's accountability. So usually when somebody jumps, whole group's got up-downs at the end. Go run your half-gasser, whole group comes back, blow that whistle, you got 10 up-downs. Here we go, get your feet moving, blow that whistle, hit it, hit it, those 10 up-downs are done. Quarterbacks, all right, uh, quarterbacks, running backs up. All right, so that's how we build it, that's how we teach it, all right, that's how we generate our formations and our snap counts, and then that's how we rep it in our conditioning period. Okay, so it's not... <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Nothing revolutionary. I don't think it's anything crazy. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have way more intricate uh, systems of snap counts built in and how they do what they do. All right. For me, it's about getting our guys to understand our snap count. Don't go off sides. Don't lose yards. We never go on two. Why do we never go on two? Because about 10 years ago, I did a study and I, and I studied all the information of teams that went off sides. And when the offense went on two, the offense went off sides at a higher percentage than the defense did. Okay, so if we want to change the snap count, we're going to change it from one to first sound to freeze. We're never going on two because the offense went off sides more than the defense did. So why try and, why try and draw a team off sides, all right, when the offense, statistically, when you study data, all right, the offense jumps off sides on, on those counts more than the defense does. So don't waste yards, all right, change your snap count in different manners. Change the tempo in which you play. Don't worry about going on two or on three or on four. Don't worry about all that stuff, in my opinion, because the offense goes off sides more often than not. Okay? Another thing, thinking about snap count, when you get inside the five-yard line on offense, don't go on two or three. All right? Think about the risk-reward. You're inside the five-yard line. You go on two, you get the defense to jump. It's half the distance to the goal line. You go on two and you go off sides. you got to go five yards back. Okay? So think about it. All right? When you're backed up, if you got the ball on your own three-yard line, all right, and it's first down, and you're coming out, and you're looking for a cheap five yards, okay? Go ahead and freeze, or if you're a team that does go on two or three, go ahead and go on two or three there. If you go off sides, half the distance to the goal, if they go off sides, march five yards, and now it's first and five. Be smart. Use your head. Don't outthink the game. Don't try and do anything that's too complicated. Know where you are on the field. Half the distance to the goal, all right, is not worth drawing a team off sides, Okay? You lose five, they go half the distance, not worth it. Offensive coordinators, keep that in mind. All right, I hope this video helps you guys out. Always remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll catch you guys next time.